This is a Monroe L-Series adding machine, I think from the 1940s. It has seven columns of digits, and tons of knobs and buttons. Each digit column has its own clear button at the bottom. There's a big one on the right to clear the whole machine. These two red buttons control the repeat function. There's two separate displays at the top, and you would not believe the cranks on this thing. There's a big crank over here with a quick release, a little one up here, and my personal favorite, this weird T-shaped one down here. This machine is surprisingly compact and lightweight for what it is. Look how small it is next to this Burroughs Class 3 machine, even though it's much more sophisticated. And look, I've even got the original vinyl dust cover. Actually, this is a bit of a mystery. The machine has the old style Monroe logo they were using in the 30s and 40s, but this vinyl cover can't be that old. The font on the cover is Helvetica. The R is a giveaway. Helvetica wasn't even created until 1957, so I'd say the cover is from the 60s at the earliest. So either the machine is actually not as old as I think, or the cover isn't the original. I'm not sure. Anyway, here's how it works. The basic operations are adding and subtracting. To add, you type a number in and turn the main crank forwards. This adds the number into the lower display up top. Then you just type in another number and crank it in too, and it'll add. Like this addition will look like this. The upper crank clears the display back to zero. You can also subtract. First you load in the number you want to subtract from, and then type the smaller number and subtract it by turning the crank backwards. So you push the crank forward to add and backward to subtract. It's pretty simple. The digit keys will stay pressed down until you turn the crank. So you'll be able to see which digits you pressed, and you can change them around if you hit the wrong one. Once you crank it, they all pop up so you can type in your next number. This little R button is the repeat switch. If you have the repeat on, then the numbers won't pop up after you turn the crank. You can use this if you want to add or subtract the same number over and over again, like when you're doing multiplication. This blank button here goes with the repeat. For the repeat mode, you push the R down. For the normal mode, you hit the blank one. Most of the fancy features of this machine have to do with multiplication. You know, multiplication is the same as addition over and over again. So if I want to do something like this, I can just type in that big number and then put the repeat on and turn the crank eight times. And now you can see what the upper display does. While I was doing that, it just counts how many times you turn the crank. Uh, that's nice, I guess. Actually, it's better than it seems. If you want to do multi-digit multiplication, like 78 times 12, you could do 78 and turn the crank 12 times. Or if you're a little smart about it, you do 78 two times in the ones position, and then 78 one time in the tens position. This is a little clunky. You have to clear out the first 78 and then type it in again one position to the left. But here's where this crazy third crank comes in better prepare yourself because this is pretty great. That crank down there moves the entire display thing over by one position. So you don't have to retype your numbers in one position to the left. You just shift the entire machine one position to the right. It's kind of a brilliant way to get this to work really easily. So to do 78 times 12, it's like this. I type in the 78, add it twice, then shift over once and add it once. And check out the top display when I did that. That one also was shifted by one position, so I see the number 12, which is what I was multiplying. So to multiply, you type one of your numbers in, and you just keep on adding and shifting until you build the other number in the small display. Here's a real big one. This is a pretty awesome calculation. Even the comptometer, which is pretty great at multiplication, would have a hard time handling numbers this large. The bonus here is that when you're done, all the numbers in the computation are visible on the machine. The answer is in the lower display. 
And the two numbers I multiplied are visible. One's on the top display and one's still on the keyboard. You can move this register all the way back by grabbing this knob up here and sliding it. It's pretty satisfying. Division works in a similar way, only you subtract instead of add. This time you start on the left and you work your way to the right, just like in long division. And the answer will end up in the top register. I really love this machine. It's a bit cryptic at first with all the cranks and several displays, but once you use it for a bit you realize that everything has a purpose and it works perfectly. That moving display is pure genius. And look at the mechanism that moves it. It's just two pegs that do a little leapfrog here in some little grooves. My model's in pretty good condition. The case is in good shape, the logo print is pretty clean. This is a pretty good looking machine actually. The case is dark green. And if you look carefully, you see kind of a crackalure pattern. I just learned that word. This thing has the Monroe logo on it three times. One of them is on the bottom, where you'll never see it. I always appreciate nice design, even on places that you don't usually see. There's another smaller logo on the front facing the user. So while you're doing your multiplying and dividing, it's always in your mind. Monroe. This thing is a Monroe machine. But the biggest logo is on the back. That one's not for you, it's for the rest of the world. People walking by your desk. They see that person pushing the buttons and turning the cranks, and it's in their mind, Monroe. You look like some kind of wizard when you're using this machine. They all wonder, what high state of mind is required to operate such a fancy machine with such ease? What hidden mysteries lie in that heart? And perhaps, is there room in that heart for another?